So our next recipe is a fun, kind of creative, different one here. And uh, this one has a little bit of fruit in it, so um, food combining, not perfect, but I think it's a great um, treat, recreational thing, dessert if you have that occasionally, or if you're looking to turn somebody on to raw food that doesn't realize all the amazing things you can make with it. Um, it's a really fun recipe to use with them. And that, this is a banana nut bread recipe. Breads can be something to that, especially if you're new to raw, it's really hard to give up some of the breads. And while this is cut, considered a sweet, quick bread, um, it really has a great flavor and texture, um, I think, that comes pretty close to the conventional uh, banana bread that many of us may have had before. And the superfoods we're gonna use in this recipe are the bee pollen. Uh, bee pollen, again, like the algae and like a lot of the other ones, ideally is going to be just consumed on its own, like take a spoonful of it um, on an empty stomach. That's how you're going to digest it the fastest and the most quickly. Um, but if you or your children have a hard time doing that, or if you're just looking for other ways to utilize it and get more of it in, certainly using it in sweet recipes like this one uh, is a great way to incorporate it and you really won't even know it's in there. The other one we're going to use is the maca powder, like I mentioned before. Um, and again, with these, a little goes a long way. For one serving, I think maca, you start with like a teaspoon, for example. And bee pollen is something like a teaspoon or a tablespoon as well. That's all you need to take. So you don't, even though some of these might be somewhat more expensive, you don't need a lot at a time. So it's going to last you a while. So what we're going to do here is we're going to first kind of make our floury base for the bread. And so in our food processor, we're going to combine some sunflower seeds that have been soaked and dehydrated. <clears throat> sunflower and other nuts and seeds that have been soaked and germinated are also um, pretty much superfoods, I would say. When you soak them, you initiate that germination process. You wake up the dormant enzymes in them, and they become a completely uh, much more easy to digest food. And you've got a lot more nutrition available to your body when you're consuming them. The reason that we soak them and then dehydrate them is really just to make them dry and crunchy again. You've already woken up the enzymes, they're much more digestible. Now by removing the water again, we make them more shelf stable, we can keep them in our cupboard, they'll last longer than if they were wet. And we've got a quick easy snack ready to go or you can use them in a recipe on a whim without having to plan ahead of time so much. So we're going to add about a cup, we're going to make half of the recipe you have there. Just make one loaf, um, and I recommend too, if you're trying new recipes and you're not sure if you're going to like them, you never have to make a full recipe. You can always cut it in half to make sure that you like it and you, then you don't feel like you wasted your money with the ingredients or something if it comes out, turns out being something you don't like. So you can always make a smaller portion to kind of test it out ahead of time before you go ahead and make a full version. Also with raw recipes, it's really easy to double them or triple them. With dehydrated items, I find I don't like to make small batches because if I'm going to spend the time, it's not really any more time to make a large batch if you're already going through all those steps. Fill your dehydrator and then you've got a lot that's going to last you for a while. The nice thing about dehydrated food is that you're removing the water, it's going to keep a lot longer than anything that's wet. So you can have a stash of it that's going to last a long time and you don't have to make it as frequently, so it's really useful. To, uh, if you're going to have dehydrated things, make set yourself up. And if you have kids, even more important, I think. The next ingredient here I have is almond meal. And all this is, is this is what's left when you make an almond or a nut or seed milk. So here, this is just um, dehydrated from making almond milk. It's also about a cup. I'm going to add that in. We're adding all our dry powdery ingredients right now. Uh, we have the chia seed superfood in here as well. If you've ever used flax or you've heard about flax crackers, flax oil, adding, making flax gel, this is to me like flax on a much greater level. Um, it's a lot more stable than flax. It's really high in protein. It's got the calcium like I mentioned before. And it has that unique mucilaginous property so you can use it to thicken any kind of um, liquid or in this case it's going to help bind our bread and give it kind of a gooey uniform texture. So this is ground chia. We're going to add that to our food processor. We're going to add another little bit of thickener. This is just to make sure that our bread is nice and gooey and fibrous and, and it congeals together. 
well. And this is a, a little bit of psyllium husk powder. And psyllium seed, again, like chia, sucks up the water, so it's a great thickener. A lot of people use it in intestinal cleanses or to keep uh, their colon things uh, moving through and keeping it clean. So that a lot of times will be used as a thickener in raw foods as well. And we're just going to use about a tablespoon or so here. Sometimes people use psyllium rather than the chia or the flax because it doesn't have the same flavor or sometimes texture that the chia or the flax does. It's a little more neutral. So if you don't want like a flaxy taste in something, a lot of times I've seen people use that instead. So we've got psyllium. We're going to add our maca, our maca powder, which I mentioned before, going into the food processor. And I also have another powder here called mesquite powder. And that is, if you don't have some of these things, also if you don't have the superfoods or some of these other things that you might not even have heard of before, you can certainly make this without it. There's a small amount. They do add a little bit of flavor, but if you don't have them or don't want to use them, go right ahead and you can make the bread. The bulk of the bulkier ingredients are what matters more in this. Um, the mesquite powder adds a nice flavor. It's um, something that's used in desserts sometimes. It has a really nice smell. I wish the smell could come through the, the television because it has such a neat, multi kind of smell to it. Um, I like to use it in some cookies and things like that. Sometimes the shake, too, it's good in shakes. We've got our mesquite powder, our bee pollen, and a little bit of spice we're going to add. This is just a pumpkin pie spice blend. I, I just like the blend um, because it has a few different things in there, but if you don't have a blend like apple pie or pumpkin pie spice, just use some cinnamon in there. This one has, let's see, cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, and clove. Let's shake some of that in. Okay, so we're going to process this so it kind of grinds everything up into a fine flour or powder first. Okay, so now we've got this nice powdery uh, mixture. We're going to put that in a bowl and set it aside. Now we're going to again use our food processor to puree up some of the wet ingredients that we're going to mix together and then um, make our dough with. So we're going to use some raisins and dates that have been soaked. The soaking is just for softening them, making them um, break apart and get mixed in more easily. I'm going to pull mine out of the water here. It's a good idea to save the soaking water in case you need any more moisture in your recipe. You've got this kind of sweetened liquid and you're not wasting the water. You can always add that to smoothies or um, just save it for making desserts whenever you need a liquid. So we've got our dates and raisins that were soaked. We're going to use some bananas riper the better. These aren't quite as ripe as I would love them to be, but we'll do the job. And now we're going to use a little vanilla. You can use fresh vanilla bean and scrape out some of the seeds if you want, or you can use, um, this is an alcohol-free Fair trade vanilla mixes in nicely into liquids. And it's not as nearly as intense as what you may be used to using with the alcohol in it. So usually you might be surprised by a tablespoon or two tablespoons. It may seem like a lot, but it's not nearly as intense in flavor as an alcohol based one. So um, you don't have to worry about overdoing it. It's not that strong. I'm going to puree this now and then go ahead and mix it in with our, our powdered items. 